My CNC router has appeared in a few of my videos. So today, I'll share my history with Home CNC and how my router table was designed and built. My CNC journey started in around 2003. Having built my home foundry, I was looking for a way to avoid making patterns the old-fashioned way. CNC machining seemed like just the thing. After a few starts and stops trying to design my own machine, I ran across some free plans on the CNC Zone forums and decided that was a good place to start learning. The JGRO, or JGRO, design was made from 3 quarter inch MDF. It used skate bearings riding on pipe for the linear motion. I purchased a driver board kit from Hobby CNC with tiny 80 ounce stepper motors. For lead screws, the plans called for quarter 20 all thread, and I initially mounted a Dremel tool on it for a spindle. While it was painfully slow, it worked and was a great tool for learning how CNC's worked, how to generate G-code, and what I wanted my next CNC router to look like. When I started designing my new CNC router table, I had a couple primary goals. First and foremost was to have a cutting area that was 4 feet by 4 feet so I could accommodate a half sheet of plywood at a time. Secondly, I wanted it to be built from as much metal as possible and cast aluminum from my backyard foundry where it made sense. With that in mind, I started designing and building. The first part fabricated was a steel base. This was built with corner posts made from 2 inch square tubing and horizontal pieces made from 2 inch angle. It sits on four casters, all of which have brakes on both the wheels and the swivels, making it very stable once parked. CNC plasma cut brackets would eventually attach the aluminum extrusions used for linear rails to the base frame. With the frame now fabricated and acting as a temporary work support, I turned my attention to the castings. These were all made using the lost foam method of casting. Patterns, or foamies, were made from pink insulation foam using the old CNC router. After adding sprues cut from scrap foam, the patterns would be dipped in drywall texture compound and hung to dry. When ready to pour the castings, the coated foamies were embedded in dry sand. The drywall texture provides a barrier between the sand and the aluminum, resulting in a nicer surface finish. Molten aluminum is then poured into the foam as fast as it'll take it, vaporizing the foam and replacing it with metal. After allowing them to cool, the castings are pulled from the sand and are ready for the next steps. After casting, I used my small 1950s Benchmaster horizontal mill to surface the various sides and in some cases drill holes for dowels. On the mount for the router, I even used the mill as a makeshift lathe to bore out the casting. For the linear rails and supports, I used 8020 aluminum extrusions. The y-axis uses a 1 inch by 3 inch section on each side of the table for the gantry to ride on. The x-axis on the gantry is made from a section of 2 inch by 4 inch. Attached to the extrusions are V-rails for V-wheels to ride on. The gantry moves by using two stepper motors, one on each side, tucked in behind the 8020 extrusion. The motors drive a small sprocket that walks along the number 25 roller chain on the outside of each gantry upright. The x-axis carriage moves along the gantry using the same type of chain drive, but in this case, the motor is mounted behind the z-axis above the gantry. The ends of the roller chains were attached to the 8020 rails using some cast aluminum brackets. The triangular ones bolted onto the ends of the y-axis rails, one on each corner. The funny shape brackets attach to the top of the gantry and reach forward to where the x-axis chain is located. When it came time for the z-axis, I pushed my casting abilities a bit. I had never liked how most CNC routers have a large dust collection hose next to the spindle. I decided to cast the z-axis as a hollow casting that the dust could be pulled through. The casting didn't turn out 100% perfect, but it turned out good enough to work as a dust collection duct. A makeshift dust shoe made from acrylic, plywood, and material from a cheap yoga mat really made the system work well. It also proved to be the best possible use for a yoga mat. Originally, I mounted a Bosch Colt trim router to the machine as a spindle. This served me quite well for several years of abuse. However, a couple of years ago, I was using the CNC to flatten a large walnut cookie using a 1-inch spoil board cutter. At some point, the bit dug in and installed the router, causing the magic smoke to escape and some of the internal bits to melt down. I replaced the Bosch router but seemed to continue to have further issues. Eventually, I broke down and replaced it with an air-cooled spindle and a variable frequency drive. I still need to design a new dust shoe for the new spindle, however. The CNC router is a major part of my woodworking arsenal. Being able to route out complex shapes enhances my other tools and enables me to create fun projects. If you want to know more about my CNC router, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.